Hi, um, my name is Johnny Logan. The nice people at Eurovision again have asked me to take a trip back in time to 1980 and to share some of my memories from the uh, first of my three Eurovision wins. Um, hope you find it interesting. I've been waiting such a long time Looking out for you, but you're not here What's another year? 1979, um, I, was, uh, I was doing a, con uh, a contest. I was playing in a band in Ireland and um, I was voted the best new singer in Ireland at that particular point in my career. It was very early. And I met a guy called Shay Healy at uh, the Castle Bar contest, song contest. We'd known each other for a long time. The year before I had written a song called Angie, which had come third in the national song contest in Ireland, which I sang. And... Uh, at the Castlebar Song Contest, Shay approached me. We'd known each other, but very um, we didn't know each other that well. We'd known each other because Ireland's quite a small country. And he just said, look, he has a song in the, I have a song in the Eurovision. Uh, it's it, I'm not sure whether it's getting into the final, but if it does, I would like you to sing it. Uh, would you? And I said, yeah, yeah no problem. And uh, I thought I would never hear from uh, Shay again. But um, the reality of it is that... Uh, it went on, that was the, the song was called What's Another Year. When I first heard the song, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do it because it was a country and Western song sung by a baritone uh, with a kind of no, no sax solo, no sax intro. It was like a, a lead guitar where the sax was. And um, a guy called Bill Whelan, who was the up and coming muso, like real, everybody was talking about him as an arranger and a keyboard player. Uh, Bill was around at that time and there was a sax player called Colin Tully playing with a band called Cato Bell. He was a Scottish guy. And uh, he was playing with a jazz funk band, fusion band. And uh, so we got together. Bill put us all together and came up with this arrangement of What's Another Year. We all loved it. We had a, Bill, myself and Shay had a meeting with uh, Tom McGrath, who was the director with Irish television at the time. From what I remember, uh, Tom McGrath objected to the sax solo and uh, he didn't want it in, but we wanted it in. Bill, particularly in the arrangement, felt it was necessary. And um, so uh, I remember Shay saying to him, sure, he's a, look at him, he's a good looking 24 year old boy. I sort of, I sort of let the camera focus on him. But I had the idea that, okay, I will, I'll sit down for the first two verses and chorus and then the third verse before the solo. And then I will stand up during the solo and move, you know, put, take the microphone out into my hand. And that was enough to get us our sax solo. So that was how the song and the presentation of the song all came together. The suit, in those days, I wasn't exactly uh, a very wealthy boy. I had been living alone since the time I was 18 and um, I was doing uh, different types of gigs like playing in Irish pubs and stuff like this and blues clubs, folk clubs, anywhere that I could make a few bucks to pay the rent. So uh, the suit, the white suit came from a shop in Dublin and I earned the money from it from a lovely little lady called Mrs. O'Connor who one of her daughters was getting married and I sang at the wedding and uh, that's where the uh, suit came from. All three Eurovisions, all three of them, like all four, including the one in 84, when I wrote Terminal 3 and it came second. All four, during the voting, it was very strange for me because it wasn't, of course it was emotional and it was like sort of a, when you won and all this sort of stuff. But during the, the voting itself, I was quite cold. I was quite like, I need, I need eight points from there. I need 12 from here. You know, when it got to the last vote, I knew exactly what I needed to win. I knew that I, the, uh, the country behind me needed more than a certain amount to beat me and stuff like this. And it, I'd worked all that out of my head. And that's why I think in 1980, when I won the first Eurovision with um, What's Another Year, uh, Ralph Siegel, who'd written Katja Epstein's song, um, Theater, went on to become a very lifelong friend of mine. And uh, I remember turning to Katja, and Katja's still a friend of mine, and giving her a big hug. And I think one of the things that anybody who's watching this interview could learn from 
is that in winning, I didn't forget the people who lost. And I think that uh, to this day, artists respect that, or the other people respect that, and the people that were involved with the song contest respect that. And I think that's something, you know, in the moment that you're having your success, you know, remember the people that are not, you know, like sort of, and feel grateful for what you're getting. And I think that that lasted to this day. I'm still grateful for every bit of success that I get. What's another year to someone who's lost everything that he owns? I really look forward to seeing all of you again as soon as possible. Um, most of my fans know that sort of my sense of humour has not got any better. Uh, to give you an idea what that's like, what you, this drummer had two daughters, he called them Anna One, Anna Two. That's how bad it is, okay? I know they're really bad, okay? But, uh, and the ones that they've heard me say are worse than that. But the um, the other fans that I know is, I'll be back on the road as soon as possible. I miss you all, love you all, and I'll see you all as soon as possible. But in the meantime, stay, so, stay safe, stay healthy, and look after each other. <laughs>